For my project this summer, I worked with a bacteria called Staphylococcus epidermidis, which is known to cause serious infections on the surfaces of medical implants. It forms a thick biofilm, as you can see on the bottom of this flask. I was interested in comparing different protocols for extracting a specific compound, PIA, from the biofilms grown in the lab. Polysaccharide intercellular adhesin is a charged polymer made up of glucosamine monomers. It is a key component for the structure of the biofilm. In the next few minutes, I will show you four protocols for PIA extraction and how to analyze the quantity and quality of PIA. Cultures are grown for at least 24 hours. The first step in each PIA extraction protocol is to remove the growth media and collect the cells that adhere to the flask. PIA is bonded to the surface of these cells. The first protocol for PIA extraction is through sonication. The cells are suspended in water and the sonicator tip produces high frequency vibrations. The local force from the vibrations strip the PIA from the surface of the cells. You can't see the sonicator tip moving, but you can hear the sound it produces from the vibration. As the sample becomes more homogeneous, the PIA is being dissolved into the water. The energy from the vibration heats up the sample, so it is cooled down on ice. Afterwards, it is placed in a centrifuge, which spins the sample fast enough to separate the cells from the water which contains the dissolved PIA. The second protocol begins with high-speed centrifugation, which produces a force of 30,000 G. The bulk force detaches the PIA from the cells and it goes into solution. To remove some of the impurities, the sample is precipitated with ethanol. Adding ethanol and letting it sit overnight causes the PIA to become solid. The next day, it is centrifuged to separate the solid PIA from the ethanol. It is difficult to see on video, but there is some clear PIA on the inside surface of this tube. A small amount of water is added to the tube to redissolve the PIA. Here you can see some insoluble impurities which will later be removed. The third protocol uses a compound called ethylene diamine tetracetic acid, or EDTA. This compound disrupts the ionic bonds such as the bonds between PIA and the cells. The cell pellet is placed in a solution of EDTA at 100 degrees Celsius and left to boil for 5 minutes. To remove the EDTA and other impurities, the sample undergoes dialysis in water. During dialysis, small molecules such as EDTA exit the tube through diffusion. Larger molecules such as PIA stay inside. The fourth protocol, heat treatment, is similar to the last protocol. Instead of EDTA, magnesium chloride salt is added to the water. The cells are heated for 90 minutes to facilitate the dissolving of PIA. Now on to the analysis. Here I'm injecting a sample of PIA into the size exclusion chromatography column. PIA is found in a wide range of molecular weights and I was interested in the size distribution that came from each protocol. PIA comes out of the column at different times depending on its size, so many fractions are collected to determine the size of PIA in that sample. Next, I use the Smith-Gilkerson assay to test the concentration of each sample as well as the concentration of each fraction from size exclusion chromatography. The concentration of each fraction shows how much PIA there is of any particular size. This graph shows the molecular weight distribution for each protocol. Without going into detail, you can see that there are significant differences between each protocol. Finally, each sample undergoes a cell count. Since bacteria growth varies from one culture to the next, the yield is calculated in PIA per cell. After each protocol, the cells are collected for a cell count. A diluted mixture of cells is placed on a hemocytometer, which is viewed in a microscope. The dots on the screen are individual cells. They are counted and multiplied by the volume and dilution factor to get the total number of cells in the culture. I hope you enjoyed learning about my research project. Thank you for watching.